I'm Tom Malagany for Inside EVs, and I'm standing next to a beautiful Lucid Air Dream Edition range. We're gonna do the Inside EVs 70 mile an hour highway range test on the Lucid Air today. We're actually the first independent news source that's going to be doing this. Motor Trend did kind of a range test few months back where they drove it from LA up to the Bay Area. But what we do with side EVs is we try to control the environment as much as possible. We drive at a constant 70 miles an hour. We set a whole bunch of other conditions so that we can compare it with other vehicles. We do the same thing with all the vehicles. I'm going to go over a little bit about what we do to prepare the cars and how we conduct these range tests while I'm driving. But for now, we plugged into an Electrify America DC fast charge station to warm the battery up. You don't want to leave with a cold battery. It's not that warm out here in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona today. It's only in the low 50s, which really isn't ideal driving range temperature. It's going to get up into the 60s which isn't bad so it's not like this is a winter range test but I have to mention it's not ideal so what we do is we DC fast charge the battery right before we had it onto the highway to warm it up so it performs a little bit better now I've worked with lucid to find a good route here in Arizona now typically I do these range tests in New Jersey I use the New Jersey Turnpike I have a set course that I drive up and down on it's relatively flat out here it's not quite as flat. We do have an elevation climb of about 600 feet during this course. So again, that's not perfect, but 600 feet isn't that bad. I'm gonna be driving in a loop that's a little bit more than 100 miles. So I'm probably gonna to need to do that loop nearly five times. The Lucid Air is EPA range rated at 520 miles per charge. And its highway EPA range rating is also 520 miles per charge. That's unusual. Usually the EVs that we, that we uh, test have different range rating for their highway and city as opposed to the combined. But in the case of the Lucid Air, it's 520 for highway, for city, and the combined. So that's the number that we're going to aim for. Will we reach it? I'm really not quite sure. Lucid does use the EPA five cycle test when they certify their vehicles. And on the other vehicles that we've tested that use the five cycle test, like Tesla, Audi, and Polestar, for instance, those vehicles typically underperform their EPA range rating when we do the 70 mile an hour highway range tests. But I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the two different ways manufacturers can certify their range with the EPA while I'm driving. I'm also gonna check in from time to time with updates on how the car's doing, how many kilowatt hours it's consumed, what the average consumption rate is, all that good stuff. But first, please don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. Okay, well, we're out on the highway now, cruising along at 70 miles an hour in the Lucid Air Dream Edition range. Boy, does this guy drive wonderfully. What a smooth, quiet drive. I wish I could go faster than 70 miles an hour because it wants to run. Uh, but we're here to do the 70 mile an hour highway range test and I want to go over a couple of things that we do at Inside EVs to make sure that the range tests are fair. We do this with all the cars. Kyle Connor and I do most of the range testing for Inside EVs and we have a standard protocol that we do. You noticed earlier I was charging the car up because we always DC fast charge it right before we begin our range test. Make sure the battery's nice and warm. Uh, I could have easily charged it the night before and just left in the morning, but it was in the low 50s. It's not that warm. The battery wouldn't be at its optimal temperature to perform its best. So we DC fast to charge the vehicles, warm the battery up nice, and then we immediately get on the highway and start the range test. We also do things like make sure that the tire pressure is set to the manufacturer's suggested tire pressure. Check that the air, all four tires were perfect, right on as I told Lucid to make sure that they were perfect for me when I arrived and they were. We also do things like check weather apps to make sure that we don't have a lot of wind. There's not a lot of wind here today. I've been checking, it's like five to seven miles an hour, very little, not enough to make any kind of noticeable impact on the range test. Uh, we also check the speedometer to GPS. And when I did that, I noticed that the air speedometer is off. Uh, when we were going uh, 70 miles an hour, it was really shown between 68 and 69. I had to actually set the cruise control here to 72 miles an hour in order to get a true 70 miles an hour on my app. So 
cruise control set at 72 miles an hour. Uh, we began, the temperature was in the low 50s. It's going to get up to the mid to high 60s today. It's not the perfect range weather, but it's not bad. Once we get up into the 60s, that's pretty good. Um, if worse comes to worse, it might have cost us a couple of miles, not much. Um, and I also mentioned earlier that uh, this isn't a perfectly flat course. We are going to be driving in these loops that are about 110 miles, and we are having an elevation gain of about 600 feet. Not ideal, not as good as what I do my drive, my range tests in New Jersey, where it's pretty flat. Um, but that also could steal a couple of miles, not much, but that's why Kyle and I always do these loop range tests. We don't start at one point and finish at another. We start and finish in the same spot or very close to the same spot where we started. And that eliminates having a, a major elevation change or if the wind is blowing in one direction really bad, you would, uh, you know, get sacrifice or gain. So by driving in these loops, it helps to offset a lot of the things that could taint the range test. That said, it's not a perfect range test. We're not in completely controlled conditions like, uh, you know, in some type of closed track loop or something. Uh, but we try to do the best we can, and I think we do a really good job at really getting what a customer would expect under these same conditions at 70 miles an hour. So here we go with the range. This is the longest uh, range test we're, we've ever done. Well, I haven't done it yet, but I'm guessing it's gonna be. I'm gonna be in the car about seven hours, uh, and uh, hopefully I'm only gonna stop about once. I do have to, probably gonna have to stop to use, make a bathroom break and grab something neat really quickly, but I'm gonna find a place right off the highway to pull in grab a bite, run back out, and continue the range test. Last thing I want to talk about is EPA. We talked a little bit earlier how the this vehicle's EPA range rated at 520 miles per charge, and that's using the EPA five cycle test. Now, the interesting thing is the EPA leaves it up to the manufacturers. You could do a two cycle test or a five cycle test. If you do a two cycle test, when it's done, you have to discount the range that you found by 30%. So if you do the two cycle test, and you come up with uh, 300 miles of range, you've got to take 90 miles off that range and then certify the car at 210 miles. Well, you send all the documents to the EPA and then they review it and they'll certify it or they'll test it themselves. Uh, most people don't realize the manufacturers are the ones that do the range testing, not the EPA. The EPA does then test some cars, not all cars. They pick some cars and they double check to make sure what the manufacturer submitted is all correct. Lucid does the five cycle test, so they don't have to deduct the 30%. Most manufacturers use the two cycle test. As a matter of fact, we have the Tesla, Audi, um, Polestar, and I think now Lucid, I think those, they're the only manufacturers that I know of that do the five cycle test. And when we do these range tests, the manufacturers that use the five cycle test typically come up short in the range test. So with that in mind, this is 520 miles of EPA rate, rated range. Usually we come 10 and 13% short of the EPA range rating. So let's say 10%, this is 520 EPA rated miles. If you take off the 10%, that's what, 468? So I'm gonna shoot for 470 today. That's what I'm hoping to get. If we beat that, good on Lucid, um, but I'm expecting about 470 because that's kind of around what we see when we do the range tests on the vehicles that have done, have used the EPA five cycle test, like Tesla. Tesla vehicles, when we do our 70 mile an hour range test, usually come up short by between 10 and 13% consistently. They never meet the EPA range rating when we do our 70 mile an hour highway range test. With that in mind, I'm gonna continue driving now. I'll check in uh, after we've driven 25% of the way at 75% state of charge, then I'll do it at 50% then at 25% and then we'll do the wrap up when we finish. Okay, so we're at the 75% state of charge mark. We've gone 25% of the way and we've covered a little over 120 miles. We have a consumption rating of 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour and we have consumed 29 kilowatt hour of energy. One thing I wanna point out is I didn't realize the center display on the air doesn't update in real time. So I put the display on so I could take a picture of it when I hit 75%. And it stayed at the 
where it was when I turned it on, which was we were at like 76% uh, state of charge. So actually that, that picture that we showed is a little wrong. Um, it shows 119 miles. We actually went like 120.5 and we used 29 kilowatt hour, not 28. Uh, but the consumption rate was the same. I'll know that for the next time we do the at 50% and then 25%. You can't uh, put the screen up until you're actually there because it doesn't update in real time. If you want to update it, you've got to back out of the screen and then reload it. All righty, we're at 50% state of charge. We're halfway there. Boy, does this thing have long range. I've been driving over three hours and I'm only at 50%. This thing is nuts. It just keeps going and going and going. Uh, so good news. We have now traveled 248 miles. The consumption rate's the same at 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour. We've been bouncing between 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour and 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour on this whole trip. So that's a great consumption rating. Uh, but we're still at 4.3 and we've now consumed 58 kilowatt hour. So we're on pace for close to 500 miles. Now, every leg is always differently. We actually went further in this leg than the first leg. On this 25% of the trip, we went 128 miles. On the first uh, section, we went 120 miles. So that's always a little bit different. I think one time I went the same on every leg with one of the cars we've done, but it's always different. And typically, most of the time, um, once we get to the third and fourth quarter, the range drops a little bit, uh, but we'll see. We are on pace for nearly 500 miles, and that's more than I expected, but this thing isn't over yet. So I'll check back in when we have 25% state of charge left, and we'll see where we are at that point. All right, we're at 25% state of charge. I got the shades on because it's getting late in the day and the sun's out. We covered 374 miles and we still have 25% state of charge. We've used so far 88 kilowatt hour and we still have a consumption rate of 4.3. It's been pretty consistent the whole trip. It bounces up and down a little bit, but it seems like at every one of the 25% points, we're always at 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour. We are gonna get dangerously close to 500 miles on this range trip, which is gonna surprise the heck out of me. I really didn't think we were gonna come near 500. I thought 468, 475, maybe 480. I was gonna be really impressed if it was 480. But it's looking like we're gonna get close to 500. We might even hit 500. Next time we check in is going to be when we're done. It's going to be dark then. I don't know how good the video quality is going to be because, you know, th this is such a long range test. It's been so long. I feel like I've grown a beard during this um, whole drive. It's amazing how far this car goes. You know, 374 miles and you still got 25% state of charge left. It's awesome. The, the Lucid Air is delivering today. We'll see what the final results are gonna be soon, but um, I tell you, color me impressed. This car's doing better than I thought it was gonna in the 70 mile an hour highway range test. All right, so we're back where we started here at the Electrify America charging station. Boy, can this thing go. It just goes and goes and goes. We drove about eight hours today. I did take a 15 or 20 minute break in the middle to use the restroom, grab something to eat, but I was driving for about seven and a half hours, crazy. Uh, I live in New Jersey and it dawned on me that I could fly from New Jersey to London in less time than it takes to drain the battery of a Lucid Air driving at 70 miles an hour. That's crazy. So how'd we do? We finished up with 500 miles on the nose. Not to qualify that, I pulled into the parking lot here for the Electrify America charging station. It's in a mall at 496 miles, but there was still a little juice left in the pack. I couldn't stop there. So I went on the service road and drove around the mall. I did a couple of loops until it hit 500 miles. So you could call it at 496 or 500, whatever makes you happy. But we did 500 miles with this guy today, and that's just crazy range. We finished up with, no surprise, 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour as our consumption rate, and we used 117 kilowatt hour. Now, 
It turned over to 117 kilowatt hour about three miles before I ended the range test. So I think it was just about ready to hit 118. And that's really what I wanted to see. But it was starting to run out of power. It was starting to not be responsive when I pressed the pedal. And I didn't want to have to push it across a parking lot after driving for eight hours. So I stopped at 500 on the nose. And uh, the in-car system tells me it was 117 kilowatt hour. I think it was about 117.5 or 6 kilowatt hour. Anyway, that shows that Lucid Air tells us that their battery pack is 118 kilowatt hour. I just drove it from 100% down past zero. I drove it about six miles after the uh, state of charge read zero and we finished up with 117 kilowatt hour used. We drove this car down to nothing and it used 117 kilowatt hour. So that's it for the video today. If you like what we're doing here on Inside EVs, please click that like button, subscribe to our channel, ring the notification bell, all that good stuff, so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.